Hi everyone, welcome to the 7 lesson for topic 4.3 Networks and Decision Mathematics. So for today's lesson, we are going to look at the fourth application under this topic, which is called as the Assignment Problems or the Allocation Problems. So I hope that by this time, you'll still be able to recall what you have learned so far. So we have three applications. We started off with a minimum spanning tree, and then second one, we have maximum flow. And then uh, previously, the latest one, we have project network. And now we are going to look at the last one, which is the assignment problems. All right, so there are two learning outcomes that you need to know after today's lesson. So the first one is uh, you'll be able to understand that we can use bipartite graph or a tabular or a matrix form to represent an assignment or allocation problem. So of course, we'll start off with what is that meant by an assignment or allocation problem. So what kind of problem that we are actually solving under this situation. All right, then the second one is how can you determine the optimum assignment? So either for a small scale problems, which means like a much more simple one, then you'll be able to uh, use inspection or either you can use a brute force uh, algorithm to help you to solve it. So we'll start off with this one. Then after that, we'll be looking at the use for Hungarian algorithm for larger problems. So this is the main one under our syllabus. All right, so let's start off with the introduction of assignment or allocation problem. All right, so what is an assignment or allocation problem? So this is the best way of matching two groups together so that you can optimize a certain objective. So this objective can be different case by case, depends on what kind of problem that you are solving. So, but a common one that you can see is either we want to minimize the time or we want to minimize the cost that we spend in some situation, or we can also use it to minimize the distance that we need to travel. But for optimized uh, optimization, it's not only limited for minimizing only, but we also can use it in a situation where you want to maximize something. For example, that we want to maximize the productivity of a machine. So in that case, we can also use allocation problems. All right. So let me try to give you a simple, a different kind of situation so you can understand this better. Okay, so the first thing, so imagine that if let's say you have a group work to do, so it is a group assignment and then you have four members, am I right? So what we can try to do here is uh, when you try to assign tasks to different people, we can try to use this. So it means that I would want to find out what is the strength or what is the time that each people needed for all this work. So I can try to find out what is the best way that I can allocate them to a different task. All right. So the second thing, I can also try to assign jobs to different machines. So I'll be based on how much the machine can produce something in a certain time, or I'll be looking at how much time that the machine will be spending in order to complete the job. So it depends on what objective that you want to achieve in that case. All right. Or in some cases, we can also use it in a way where uh, if let's say we have four different taxi and they are going to I mean, uh, bring, I mean, carry different customer, right? So I want to find out how can I minimizing the distance that all these uh, taxi can travel in total. So I try to find out the optimum combination or the optimum allocation or assignment. All right, so I can try to assign taxi to different customer as well. So for all the problems, it will be consists of a number of tasks or agents. So for example, you know, like taxi or the jobs or the tasks. And also you have some agents, so which mean like the people, the taxi here or the machine here. So in all the cases that we'll be looking at, we are doing one-to-one -one matching. So which means that one agent is assigned to exactly or only one task. All right, so you can imagine in such a way where you are assigning tasks to different people. So you are doing a group work. So that's why you have four people. You must make sure that every, each people, they have works to do, right? So you are not going to say that, oh, maybe people A is the smartest one. So you are going to throw all the tasks to these people. I mean, although the people A can do everything, but then that's not going to give you the minimum time that he can complete. Because he cannot do everything at one time. So maybe you have four tasks A, B, C, D. So if let's say you only throw everything to one person, then the time that uh, this person will need to finish everything will be longer if let's say you try to delegate the different tasks to different people, right? 
So that's why you want to make sure that every task only having one people to do it and one people doing one task at one time. So for one job, you have one machine to do it and each machine must be having one job to do. So each taxi must be fetching one customer and one customer uh, must be assigned to only one taxi. All right, so that's the idea. So now we'll be looking at two examples for how are we going to use a brute force algorithm or how are we going to use a simple inspection to help us to see what is the best way that we can try to allocate so that we can minimize something or maximize something. All right, in this situation, suppose that a company wishes to use two transport companies A and B for deliveries one and two. So giving one delivery to each transport company. All right, so the weights here are the transport fees quoted by the two companies. So you can see it's a one-to-one -one matching. So you are going to give one delivery to each transport company and each company should be getting one delivery. So you are not going to put uh, both delivery to, I mean, given it to one companies only. All right, so in this case, then we have two companies here. So you can see that this is a complete bipartite graph. I hope that you still remember from what we have learned in topic 3.3, right? So this is a complete bipartite graph bipartite graph because you can see that there are two groups which mean the first one we have the transport company and the second one we have the delivery and all the uh, I mean all the vertices here they are adjacent to every vertices in the other group but then there's no adjacency between the elements under the same group so that's why this is a complete bipartite graph okay so there are three ways that normally we can try to display or represent our information in an annotation problem so the first one will be using a bipartite graph. So as what you can see here, so you can see that if let's say you are assigning delivery one to uh, transport uh, companies A, then which means that the fees that you will need is uh, $145. So uh, it is quoted by company A that you need $180 to do a uh, delivery to. So same thing for B. So B quoted uh, $164 to deliver one or uh, 191 for delivery two. All right, so the second thing that we can try to use to represent this kind of information is by using a tabular form. So which means we are going to transfer all the information into a table. All right, so that's what we can see here. So you can try to put, for example, we are trying to put our companies here. So this is company A and company B, and we are doing, we are assigning delivery one or delivery two. So for a company to deliver one, so which means that you will be spending 145. All right, so for A to deliver two, so it will be 180. So for B to do delivery one, then you will need to spend 164. And for B is going to be 191. So the next one that we can try to use is in a matrix form as well. So which means that we are going to use matrix. All right, so you have A and B and then after that one and two. So you can see that it's kind of similar with a table, but it's just that we are writing it in a, in a matrix form rather than drawing all the rows and columns to do the tabular form. All right, so these are the three types of representation that you can try to draw, or you can try to use it to represent the information for uh, allocation problems. Okay, so now, can you see which allocation of the two jobs will minimize the total cost? So which means how can we assign? Is it going to be company doing delivery A, delivery 1, company doing delivery 2, or company A doing delivery 2 and uh, company B doing delivery 1? So we want to find out which combination will give you the minimum cost here. Alright, so of course the first thing that you can try to do is by using a simple inspection. So either you can use your calculator, but I will definitely encourage you for uh, all the questions here, it will be helpful for you to use it to practice your mental calculation because this time of quite uh, this type of question tend to come up in calculator free section. So that's why I use this uh, time to actually practice your mental calculation as well. So what you can see here is that uh, if we try to look at it, no matter, okay, maybe you can try to look at it in a column form. Okay. If let's say company A is doing delivery one, then you are going to save $19 because the difference here, 145 and 164 is 19. So that's why if A is doing delivery A, you are going to save $19. If A is doing delivery two, then you are going to save $11. 
So you want the minimum one, right? So that's why the more that you can save, the better it is. So that's why in this case, I can definitely know that I will try to let the company A to do delivery one and then company B to do delivery two. So that's why I pay an extra $11, but then here I save $19. So that's the idea for inspection. Okay, the other way that you can try to do, which is introduced in your textbook, is called as the brute force algorithm. Okay, no worries about the name. So, I mean, it is not important in such a way where later you are going to learn a uh, Hungarian algorithm and that is much more important in our syllabus, all right? Because you'll realize that you still need a lot of uh, manual calculation later. You'll need to do a lot of steps for you to get something. But then a uh, Hungarian algorithm will be much more helpful in a, in a complex situation, all right? Because in this case, you only have like two to two metrics. So you can see you only have two delivery company and also two deliveries. So you can imagine if let's say now we have five uh, that you want to match to the other five. And if let's say you are going to use inspection on and brute force is going to be a little bit uh, impractical. All right. So how brute force work? So brute force algorithm is an algorithm where you try out all the possibility, then you choose the best one. So which means that now I am having these two, right? So which means uh, in this case, what I will be doing here is try to uh, list out all the possibility. So I have delivery A and delivery 2 need to be done. Sorry, delivery 1 and delivery 2 need to be done. Okay, so my combination here, I am having two types of combination. So the first one is either company A is doing delivery 1 or, and company B is doing delivery 2. Or the other case will be company B is doing delivery 1 and company A is doing delivery 2. So I list out all the possibility and then I try to find out what is the total cost that I need. So if let's say uh, company A is doing delivery 1 and company B is doing delivery 2, then this will be the two number, right? So that's why you can try to use 145 to plus 191 and you'll be able to get, you need a total of 336 uh, to do that. All right, so if let's say you are using the second one, which means A and then, uh, sorry, B will be doing delivery one and then A will be doing, A will be doing delivery two, then in that case, you will need a total of 344. So that's why you'll realize that if let's say you want to save the cost, then of course you will try to choose the one that gives you the minimum cost, am I right? And this answer is exactly the same like what we mentioned just now which is uh, A will be doing one and then B will be doing two. So in that case, then this will give you the minimum cost. So yeah, this will be the minimum that you get. All right, and uh, must remember that in all the cases that we are looking at, it's always one-to-one -one matching. So although for company A, uh, it is cheaper for, for you to give company A to actually finish both delivery one and two. But in that idea, then you wouldn't be able to achieve the objective here, which the question one is to give one delivery to each transport company. So it's going to be like same thing. So if let's say uh, you have contract with these two transport company, I mean, at the end of the day, you still need to use both of them. So you are not going to waste your resources, which means throw everything to company A, then company do nothing, right? So that's why in this case, you want to make sure that everyone has a job and a job has one, uh, I mean, one people or one agent to do that. So that's why this is what we try to do to uh, minimize the cost. All right, so this is the idea. Then now we'll be looking at the other one, which will have like uh, three elements in each group. And that's going to be longer for the, I mean, uh, for the process. Alright, so now we have three companies here. So same thing, uh, we try to transfer all the information into a tabular form first. Alright, so we have uh, A, B, C here. So that's why A, B, and C. So we try to treat it the same. So which means that we have uh, three deliveries to be done and you have three transport company now. Okay, so uh, for A to complete delivery one, you need $170. Okay, for A to complete delivery 2, you need 150. For A to complete delivery 3, you need 260. Alright, so you can try to work out for the rest one. So 160 and then 160 and the next one 210. So for B to complete you, uh, delivery 1, 100, 
90 and then delivery 270, delivery 3, 270. All right, so by looking at everything that we have here, then you, know, you can try to identify. So same thing, the first thing that you can try to do is, or try to do, you can try to do inspection as well. I think, uh, I mean, it's not something that you will use in the later question, but I think it's a good way for you to practice your logical thinking and so on. So by looking at this situation, then how are you going to identify which is the best choice that you will be doing? All right, so same thing. So something that you can try to check is that you realize that uh, when you try to look over for all the different delivery company, they quoted the higher, highest price for delivery tree. Am I right? So that's why by looking at all this value, this is the largest one. Okay, so something that you can try to check is you try to look at the difference of the number. So the largest and the smallest between these two numbers is around 20, I mean the 10 here and then 20 here, the uh, maximum difference is 30. And the maximum difference here is only 20, but the maximum difference here can be like uh, 60. So that's why you will be saving a lot of costs if let's say you are choosing the uh, transport company B to do delivery trade. So you can save at least $50, am I right? So $50 compared to uh, A and then $60 compared to this one, which this difference is something that uh, the first two columns cannot do that. So that's why you can imagine that you are going to pick this. So since company B is doing a uh, delivery tree, so that's why that left with two that we are going to look at. Okay, so the same thing. So you can see that in this case, uh, for company A, both number is actually smaller than uh, company C here. So that's why the next thing that you can try to check it out is what is the difference here. So 190, 170, so it, it seems like the same. So 150 and 170, the difference here is 20 as well. Sorry, the same that I mean is 170, 190, you save 20. So 150 and 170, you also save 20. So that's why no matter you are picking this uh, outcome or this outcome, that's actually going to be exactly the same as well. So that's why we can try to imagine that perhaps I'll try to get this answer or I will get this answer. Okay, so now let's try to use the brute force algorithm to check what answer that we can get, what combination gives us the minimum cost here. Okay, so the same thing, we need to complete delivery 1, 2, and 3. So now let's try to write down, I can try to write it a little bit over the other side. Okay, 1, 2, 3. All right, so what are the different combinations that we might be having? So in this case, we might be having more combination already. In this case, uh, if 6, then which means you will be having, sorry, uh, 3 here, then which means you will be having 6 combination. Okay, so the first one that you will be having is listing down everything. So either A doing this, B doing this, C doing this, or change B and C around. So you have A, C, B. And the next one, I can have B, A, C. And I can also have B, C, A. Then continue on with uh, C, A, B and also C, B, A. So this is the six different combination that we can try to do. All right, then the next part is to find out what is the total cost that you need if you try to allocate it by using this different combination. All right, so I'll try to fast forward this. You can try to use your uh, mental calculation or you can try to use your calculator, depends on you. But as well as say, it's good to uh, practice your mental calculation as well. Okay, then now we try to find out all the, I mean, each of the total for each of the value here. Okay, I'll try to fast forward this part. So after you get your answer, you realize that the outcome that we have is exactly the same with what we have when we are doing our inspection just now. So your minimum here is either A doing delivery 1, B, C doing delivery 2, and B doing delivery 3. So that's why you can see that it's going to be the same like the one that we put a tick just now. So you can see A, C, B. Alright, so which gives you $150 in total. Or the other case that you can try to pick is the other one that we found just now as well, right? So C doing delivery 1, B doing delivery 2, and then C uh, will be doing, sorry, B will be doing your delivery 3 as well. 
So that's why these are the best combination that you might be having. All right, so which means that in some cases, you might be having two answers. So you might need to be very careful when you are trying to solve the question. So I hope that you understand the thought process of how can you identify the minimum by using uh, inspection or by using a brute force algorithm here. All right, so now we'll be looking at an example of if let's say how if we want to allocate things for a maximum. All right, so this is as what we have mentioned just now. So in some of the cases, you might not want to minimizing something, but you want to maximizing something. So you, uh, for example, in this situation, we are allocating three workers to three different machines. So each of the machine make different components and each worker has different competency on each machine. So what or uh, which worker should be assigned to each machine to maximize the total number of components that uh, can be created by these three worker. So which means that uh, as you want to find, right, you are not going to minimize the situation where you don't want to find out the minimum total product that this worker can be produced, right? You are going to maximize the productivity of every person here. So that's why instead of using a minimum, a maximum will be much more suitable in this situation. So which means Every time when you are dealing with this kind of situation, you will need to identify yourself that whether you need a minimum or maximum to uh, achieve the objective that the question wants to achieve. Alright, so in this question, we are going to maximize so the same thing. Let's try to find out what's the maximum that you can find in everything here. So you can see that the uh, major difference here is going to be this part and also this part because machine 2, the difference is not that much. Or you can try to look at it in a row as well. All right. Or if let's say you find it very difficult to think about the logical way. So now you realize that if you are using inspection for this equation, right, then it might be harder. Because you can realize the number isn't that easy and you can see that the difference here and the difference here, it looks the same as well. So if let's say you are using brute force, then imagine that you also need to find out the different combination, then you try to find out the total, right? So this is why later in a much more tricky situation, which uh, that's going to be the one that you need to know, which is how to use your Hungarian algorithm to help you to solve all these questions. Alright, so that's why I'm just going to go through this very quickly to write down the answer for brute force. Then after that, uh, we can proceed on for the Hungarian algorithm. All right, so as what you can realize here, then uh, if you want to maximize this, then the maximize the mini or uh, the maximum uh, combination that you can have here is the 3390 that produced by if worker A working on machine one, worker B working on machine two, and worker C working on machine three. All right, so this will be your maximum. So which means it's going to be this one, this one, and this one. Alright, so that's the idea. I hope that you can understand how everything of this uh, works. And now, uh, I hope that from all this example, then you'll realize that if let's say we were to use inspection or we were to use brute force every time, then you'll realize that uh, you actually need a lot of effort and time to actually come out all this total. And imagine now we only have like a 3 times 3 kind of table. But later, if let's say how if we are having 4 and how if we are having 5, so if let's say you are, you are having 4, right, then the combination that you'll be having will be 24 different combinations already. If let's say you are doing 5, then there will be more. So you will be having like 120 total that you need to work out for you to find out the minimum or maximum. So that's why it's not going to be very practical in those situations. And now we'll be looking at the part where how are we going to implement an algorithm which is called as Hungarian algorithm in all these uh, allocation problem. All right, so let's look at the next part. All right, so as what I have mentioned just now, so you already see how to use inspection and also brute force algorithm to help you to get the solution for allocation problem. But you know that in real life situation, that could be more complex uh, allocation problem. So that's why we need an algorithm, which in our syllabus, we are going to learn 
Hungarian algorithm to solve all this problem. All right, so we are going to implement this algorithm in this uh, simple example here. So this is a taxi company that has three taxi A, B, C, and there are three customer uh, one, two, three that require a taxi. So these are the distance that each taxi must be traveled to get to each of the customer. So find the optimum allocation and hence from that, then you can get what is the minimum total distance that traveled by all these taxi here. All right, so by looking at this situation, actually this is not a very hard one. You can always do this by uh, using inspection. So uh, if you are going for row, I don't think you can get it because uh, you can see that the smallest one for, I mean the nearest one for taxi A is customer 3, the nearest one for B is customer 2, the nearest one for taxi C is customer 3. But then now you realize that there's no taxi that go to customer one right then, but you have two taxi that go for customer three. So that's why if you are looking at it as a row, then you can't find the optimum one. But let's try to look at the customer. So the nearest taxi to customer A is uh, taxi C. The nearest taxi to customer two is taxi B. And the nearest taxi to customer three is taxi A. So uh, I believe that this will be our optimum uh, I mean our optimum allocation here. All right, so you can try to remember all this number and later when we try to check and see whether our guess here is correct or not. All right, so now let's try to uh, go through all this step one by one. So you might want to follow very closely because uh, there's a lot of things that seems very new and you have quite a lot of steps that you need to do to uh, find the solution. All right, so step one, what we need to do is rewrite all this information into a matrix without needing need to write the taxi A, B, C, and also customer one, two, three. So which means it's going to be a very simple three times three matrix here. So just uh, copy all the information, 26, 17, 9, 15, 13, 17, and last one, 13, 16, and 11. Alright, so the first one is very easy. So instead of doing it in a table, we are going to do it in a matrix form. So first step, we write the information in a matrix form. Second thing, what we need to do is do row reduction. Okay, so you imagine, right, every time when we are finding all the number, actually uh, what matters is not the real number, it's not the exact number, it's not the original number. What is important is what is the relationship, what is the... Uh, what is the difference between all the number that we are having? So for example, if let's say you imagine, right? If let's say I try to change this number all become like 20, uh, plus 3, plus 3, and plus 3. So do you think you are still going to pick uh, this row? You are going to do that, right? Because this is still the smallest one. So that's why you can see that how do you identify all this is actually by doing uh, by looking at the difference. So you can see that 16 is still the smallest one, no matter now when you try to add 3 to all these different numbers. So you can imagine that what matters is the relationship between all the value that you have in your information rather than the exact information. So when we are doing this row reduction and column reduction, it, it actually helps us to simplify the number that we are having. So what we try, what we left here is only the relationship between all the numbers. Okay, so how can we do that? So the first thing, row reduction, which means that you need to find out what is the smallest number in each row, then you subtract the number from every element in the same row. Okay, so let's try to look at it like this. So first row for taxi A. So what is the smallest number that you have? It's 9, am I right? So that's why we are going to subtract 9 for all these elements in the same row. So which means now, instead of 26, I'll be using 26 minus 9, so I left with 17. So 17 minus 9, I get 8. So 9 minus 9, I get 0. Is that alright? So let me repeat again. The smallest number in your first row is 9. So that's why you are using all the element here to subtract by 9. Alright, so that's why 26 minus 9, you get 17, 17 minus 9, you get 8, and 9 minus 9, you get 0. Okay, so what is the result of this? You can see that the value here is much more simplified compared to 26, 17, and 9. But the relationship between all the numbers is kept the same. So for example, the difference between 26 and 9 is 17. So 17 between 9 is 8. 
So nine and nine, of course, that's zero. Lah. So of course, the number is reduced now, but the difference and the relation remains the same. Okay, so we are going to do the same thing for the second row. So what is the smallest number in your second row? That's 13. So that's why 15 minus 13, you get 2. 13 minus 13, you get 0. 17 minus 13, we get 4. So that's why you can see that the relationship kept, kept the same. So the difference between 15 and 13, which is 2, then 13 and 13 is 0, 17 and 13 is 4. And the 0, which is the smallest here, is basically the smallest in your original matrix. Am I right? Okay, so now same thing, we continue. Okay, so for last row, sorry, I should be looking at the matrix here, but I mean, either way, they are just the same. Lah. Okay, so for the last row here, the smallest number that you are having is 11. So that's why subtract 11 from all the number here. 13 minus 11, you get 2. 16 minus 11, we get 5. And then uh, 11 minus 11, that's 0. Okay, so now you can see all these numbers are reduced already compared to the original one that we are be having. Alright, so I hope that now you can recall the first step here, write in matrix. Second step, reduce it by doing row reduction. Okay, second thing, after we complete the row reduction, we are going to continue on with the column reduction. So we try to simplify in terms of the column as well. Because you'll realize that just now when we try to do inspection, instead of looking at the row, you also can try to check it from the column, right? So now, after row reduction, we are going to reduce it in terms of the column reduction also. So same thing, column reduction, the difference is just that you are finding the smallest number in each column, then you subtract it from every element in the same column. Okay, so let's try to start with the first column here. All right, so 17, 2, and 2. So the smallest number that you have is 2, right? So that's why subtract 2 from all the elements in your first column. So 17 minus 2, we get 15. 2 minus 2, that's 0. 2 minus 2, another 0. So second row. 8, 0, 5. So the smallest number that you have is 0. So that's why 8 minus 0, you get back 8. 0 minus 0, 5 minus 0, you get 5. So the same thing for your last column here. Uh, the smallest number that you are having is 0. So that's why 0, 4, 0. So you realize that by using this thing right, the smallest number you will be getting is going to be 0. You will never get a negative number here. Because you realize that the smallest number that you can have is certainly 0. So when you use, I mean, something to minus of zero, you wouldn't be able to get any negative number. Lah. All right, so this is step three. So step two, row reduction. Step three, column reduction. So the idea for reduction is look at either in a row or in a column, find the smallest number, then subtract the, uh, subtract the smallest number from all the elements under the same row or the same column. All right, so row reduction, column reduction. Now we are going to look at the step four. Okay, so remember, when we are minusing everything to zero, then you realize that that's going to be the minimum that you can have. Okay, for example, you can see why all this number here becomes zero. It's because of those are the smallest number that you have in each row, right? You can see nine is the smallest number and nine becomes zero. So it's a result from nine minus nine. So the 13 here becomes zero because 13 is the smallest number under this row. So 13 minus 13, you get zero. So why this becomes zero is because 11 minus 11, then you get zero. So that's the idea of it. So how come these two become zero? Because that's the smallest number when you try to look at it from the first column. So which means that when we try to find out what is our solution, that we are going to look for zero. So which means that zero are the places that could give us the minimum allocation here. Okay, so step four. This is a simplified version of how can we try to find out uh, whether we already can get our solution or not, which our step four is we try to cover the zero and check. So what is that meant by cover zero? We are going to use the least number of line. You are just going to do it either horizontally or vertically. Remember, there's no, there's no such thing as a diagonal line, okay? So either horizontally or vertically, and we try to cover all the zero by using the least number of line. Okay, so I will be copy whatever matrix that we have under step three. All right, so I mean, in the situation later, you, are, you can straight away cover it here, but then now for the first example, we are going to do it step by step. So that's why we are just going to copy from the above. Okay, so this is the result that we have after step three. So now we are going to continue to use this to do our step four. 
Okay, so remember, we need to use the least number of line to cover all the zero. Of course, you can use your highlighter here as well. I think that would be easier. Okay, so what you, we need to do here is just try to check how can you use the least number of line to cover the zero. So which means that we are trying to cover as much as zero that we can by using one line. Okay, so in this case, you will realize that either you try to draw it here, you try to draw it here, or you try to draw it here, you can cover maximum two zero. Am I right? So that's why as random, you can try to pick. Okay, so for example, I'm going to cross off this first. Okay, then after that, may maybe next one or the maximum that I can tr cross off. So here, if let's say I try to draw a line, I cover one more, right? So in this case, maybe I want to cover two more. I'll be drawing a line here. All right, then after that, the next one, then you realize that after you draw the line, then uh, you still need at least one more line to draw it. So three is the least number of line that you need. Okay, you realize that you can have different idea of drawing the line. So if let's say you are not drawing like this, uh, you can imagine that the other alternative will be, if let's say you try to cover here first, you can also do that. So cover two zero, cover two zero, then after that you left with one zero and you want to do this also can. But you realize that at the end of the day, the least number of lines that you need will be of course two. Oh sorry, will be of course three in this case. So no matter how you draw, you need at least three lines, then only you can cover all the zero. Okay, I hope it makes sense. So no matter you are drawing it like this, you need three lines. No matter you are drawing it like what we try to do here, you can draw it like this as well. You also need three lines. So uh, if let's say you are drawing the horizontal one, you also need three lines. So the least number of lines that you need to cover all this zero will be three lines. All right, so that's the idea. So I'm just going to cover it randomly. Okay, so the three line that I have is like this. Okay, so that's going to be our step four. Okay, so why are we doing this? It's for us to check whether we already get our solution or not. So the co process of this algorithm is complete. If the line that you are drawing, if the line that you use to cover all the zero is equal to the number of row, or is equal to the number of columns. So in this case, it should be the same because it's a three times three matrix, right? So either you have three row or three columns. So at the end of the day, you need and uh, you need three line. So which mean uh n times n matrix should have n line. So which means this is a three times three matrix. So that's why you should have three lines here. All right. So if let's say in this case you realize that you already have three lines, so you have three lines here and the number of the number of row that you are having. Let me try to write like this. All right, so you see that the number of lines that you are having is three. Then the number of row that you are having is also three. So since three and three, they are the same. So now your number of line and the number of row that are equal to each other, then now we can use this matrix to identify our minimum allocation already. So how can we do that? Same thing. I am going to copy down first our previous matrix. Okay, so by using what we have done previously, right, you know that we are going to do one-to-one -one matrix. So it means in this case, when we are trying to write this, this actually represents taxi A, A, B, C, and a customer one, two, three, right? So when you are choosing your optimum uh, allocation or your optimum solution here, you must make sure that each taxi is fetching one customer and each customer is having one taxi that going towards him or her, right? So that's why in this case, what we try to do is determine one zero in each column and one zero in each row. So one of the tips that will be helpful is consider those row and columns with only one zero entry. Okay, so you can imagine that you cannot pick these two so reason being is, if let's say you pick these two, which means that taxi B is going to fetch customer 1 and 2, then later you are left with one taxi that do not have any customer to fetch. Alright, so that's the idea. So that's why one tip here is try to determine or try to consider those row and column with only one zero first. Because which means that that's the only minimum allocation that we can try to do for the specific one. Okay, so, oops, sorry, I erased this. All right, so now let's try to identify that. Okay, so we can try to imagine your first row first. So you can see your first row, you only have one zero. So definitely this is going to be that. So which means that taxi three is going to fetch your customer C. All right, 
So sorry, your taxi. This is your taxi A here. Let me try to write down maybe. This is A B C. Then this is one two three. So which means taxi A is going to fetch customer three. Okay. So now you are having two and two here, right? So you can see that even though uh taxi C is also I mean can be a minimum for three as well. But then since taxi A is fetching customer three already, so you are not going to pick three here. Because you can only have one zero in one column, which means only one taxi is going to taxi uh is going to customer tree. So that's why if let's say taxi A is carrying customer tree, then which means taxi C will be carrying customer one. Alright, then now you only left with cus uh taxi B. So taxi B will be taking customer B, uh customer two. Alright, so that's the idea that you realize that this answer is exactly the same with what we have guessed here. Alright, so now let's try to write out our optimum allocation. So which means uh, taxi A should be taking customer 3, taxi B should be taking customer 2, and then uh, taxi C should be taken customer 1. So by looking at this, then we can try to find out our minimum distance that you need to travel. So minimum total distance. So that will be equal to, so if A for 3, then now you need to go back to your original table or original matrix. Huh? So A taking customer 3, so which is 9. B taking customer 2, 13. C taking customer 1, 13. So that's why it's going to be 9 plus 13 plus 13 plus 9 plus 13 plus 13. Alright, so 26 plus 5 and you can get 35 km. So that's the minimum total distance that you can... Uh, if let's say you try to allocate it in a much in a optimum situation. Alright, so that's the idea. So now let's try to recall every step that we are going to do everything in one single question. Alright, so step one, write it in matrix, row reduction, then continue with column reduction. Then you are going to cover the zero and see whether you have all the lines and the row that are equal to each other or not. So uh, for the next example, we're looking at the idea where your lines and row is still the same. Then uh, after the second example, we are going to look at the situation. How if the lines and the rows are different? All right, so step four, covered all the zero. If let's say you get your number of lines and the number of rows that are equal to each other, then now you can determine all your zero, then you can write down what is your optimum allocation already. All right, so now let's try to repeat all this step again by using our example two.